What time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Yes, it's the Abbott and Costello Show. Produced and transcribed in Hollywood for your listening and laughing pleasure. Chuckles with a carload and music by Matty Malnick. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Well, it's about time you got here. Where were you? Well, Abbott, I met all the crown heads of Hollywood today. Costello, there are no crown heads in Hollywood. Abbott, you never walked through a pig line, have you? <laughs> Stop this nonsense and tell me where you've been. Well, I was helping my Uncle Mike with his new invention. He's invented a plane that goes 5,000 miles an hour and goes to London in five minutes. Wait a minute. If it goes 5,000 miles an hour and goes to London in five minutes, how, how does it stop? Let London get a guy to work on that. <laughs> Costello, your Uncle Mike is as big a dope as you are. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, yeah. my Uncle Mike is a smart man, Abbott. For ten years, he ran the Chase National Bank for the investors. He did? Yes, sir. And for the next ten years, investors ran a national chase for Uncle Mike. <laughs> Has Uncle Mike ever been in jail, Lou? Yes. One time he got so full of Christmas spirit that they threw him in jail for singing Christmas carols. Lots of people sing Christmas carols. On the 4th of July? I... <laughs> Poor Uncle Mike, he's in a hospital. He's got a mule on his nose. Not a, a mule? You mean a mole? No, not after the mule kicked him in a kisser. He's got a mule there. All right. <laughs> Costello, what keeps you from being the biggest idiot in the world? I guess I'm too fat for my height. Oh, get him out of here. <laughs> across the street having a beef stew. Uh, well, how was it? Terrible. It had nothing in it but beef tongue and oxtails. Well, what's wrong with beef tongues and oxtail? Nothing. But who's getting all that stuff in between? I... <laughs> <laughs> Look, hey, Lou, why don't you come over to my house for dinner? We always have a, have a crowd. My wife's dinners are talk of the town, and they're always informal. What do you mean informal? Well, we don't dress for our dinners. No wonder they're the talk of the town. I... <laughs> Well, one thing, there's always plenty of meat at our house. Last time I was there, your wife gave me a rabbit stew, and the next day when I came over, your cat was missing. <laughs> Just a minute. Are you trying to insinuate that my wife served you cat meat? All I know is every time I met a dog on the street, my back arches. <laughs> my wife is a very particular cook. Her kitchen is immaculate. That's more than I can say about your Aunt May. Her kitchen is a disgrace. Her sink is filled with eggshells. The drawers in her kitchen cabinet are full of... Carrot tops and wilted lettuce? She's sloppy. She is not. That's her hobby. Uh, she collects garbage. <laughs> you know, garbage is the same as antiques. Garbage is the same as antiques. Certainly, it's a collector's item, ain't it? Oh. <laughs> Costello, you must study to be an ignoramus. You couldn't be any dumber if you, if you were twins. Oh, yes, I could. If I was twins, there'd be two of us, and we could help each other. <laughs> Costello, I don't know why I associate with you. I'm a college man, a fraternity man. See this? Mm. Phi Beta Kappa. Ha ha. Look at this. What's that? Half a can of tuna. <laughs> that trouble is. You're illiterate. 
You spend your spare time... Why don't you spend your spare time reading, Lou? Trying to improve your mind. Take me. I read a lot. There's nothing to improve your thinking like a, a bookcase well stacked. Abbott, when I think of something well stacked, I ain't thinking of a bookcase. <laughs> Costello man would have to go a long way to meet a dope as stupid as you. Oh, no, you wouldn't. I'm willing to travel. I, uh... <laughs> the trouble with you is that you're, a, you're an ignoramus. Do you know what an ignoramus is? Sure. And I like his partner, too. His partner? Ain't you ever heard of Ignoramus and Andy? No, no. <laughs> That's a sample of your mentality. Costello, you ought to see a psychiatrist. I went to one last week. He told me I got a split personality. I'm really two people, Abbott. You've got enough personality to split, split with ten people. <laughs> Just a minute. Don't laugh. Show me where it says that in the uh, Never mind. <laughs> now, watch out, Abbott. You're getting me mad. I can hardly hold my temper in. <laughs> it's kind of silly for you to hold your temper in when, when the rest of you is spread out all over the place. <laughs> Are we both on the same page? I don't know where the... <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> Certainly we are. The trouble with you is you can't read. You never went to school. I just saw. I went to Colt Hill High School in Patterson, New Jersey. Well, wait a minute. When did you go to high school? September 11th, 1935. You mean... You mean you only went one day? You mean you're supposed to go back? I... <laughs> no wonder you're so stupid. <laughs> I can't help it, Abbott. I led a very sad life. When I was a kid, my father used to beat me over the head with a baseball bat. My mother used to beat me over the head with a baseball bat. My brother Pat used to hit me over the head with a baseball bat. My Uncle Mike used to hit me over the bed with a baseball bat. My <laughs> Uncle Jimmy Cully used to hit me over the bed with a baseball bat. Minute, my man. Uncle Tom Zizimus used to hit me over the head with a baseball bat. My goodness. Everybody hit me over the no, head with a no, baseball no, that's bat. that's terrible. That was a terrible family. Yeah, but what a baseball team we had. Uh, <laughs> you must have been a pretty tough kid to stay in all that abuse. I was a pretty tough kid, Abbott. I belonged to the toughest gang in Patterson. We were so tough that when we walked down Main Street and Market Street, even the sewers backed up. <laughs> did any of your old gang become successful, Lou? Oh, yes, they did. Did you ever hear of Joe Buzzo? Yes. He went into business. He's making, he's making money hand over fisk. No, no, you mean hand over fist. He's in a tire business, and it, in that business, it's hand over fisk. <laughs> I remember Bozzo. You know, I seem to remember him. Wasn't he the kid that got yeah. lost? Wasn't he the kid that got lost in the woods? Yes, he was in the woods for five days, had nothing to eat but pine needles. Pine needles? Yep. Did they have any bad effect on him? Well, only when he got home, his mother made him a big dish of spaghetti in his stomach, knitted a pair of socks out of it. <laughs> well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Everybody in that gang, they, they all amounted to something but except you. I'm doing all right, Abbott. Ah. Only yesterday, MGM called me up and wanted to use me in a screen test, but I turned him down. You turned down a screen test? Why? They wanted to throw me against it and see if it was strong. Ah, <laughs> uh, you couldn't work for anybody. I ought to get rid of you myself and get myself another partner. Who would work with you? Oh, I could work with a cow. I, I could get lots of laughs. How oh, could you get a lot of laughs with a cow? You'd be surprised at the things I could pull on her. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, Costello, it's our secretary, Viola Vaughn. Oh, I feel so good tonight. Just a minute, Viola. I object the way you come in here every week and hug and kiss me. I don't hug and kiss you. I know, that's what I object to. <laughs> Viola, you look lovely tonight. That's a beautiful dress you have on. Ah, uh, do you like it? It's made of jersey. Looks a little tight around Patterson. <laughs> It's, it's a, a half-and-half dress. It's half cocktail and half dinner gown. Which half are you wearing? <laughs> Never mind, Emma. Uh, have you heard from your folks since you've uh, been out here? Oh, yes. I got a car this morning. They're driving out, and last night they stopped at a little place outside New Orleans called How's Bayou. How's Bayou? Fine. How's Bayou? Uh... <laughs> this keeps up. I'm going to turn my ice machine business... <laughs> What do you say? Uh, if this keeps up, I'm going to turn my ice machine business over to my brother, Pat. Well, pay no attention to me, He's just jealous. I am not. Well, Mr. Abbott is right, Costello. I can see right through you. Well, it was a little warm today to wear a slip. <laughs> Costello, you're not fooling anybody. Viola's getting wise to you. Last week was her birthday, and you didn't even buy her a present. Well, I didn't really expect any, bud. I think Costello's the type that gets cheap around Christmas time. Just a minute, Viola. 
That's a nasty thing to say. Hey. Costello gets cheap around Christmas time? Thanks, Abbott. <laughs> <laughs> Costello's just as cheap all the rest of the year. <laughs> If the Plasters Union is listening, have Bud Abbott's overalls ready in the morning. Abbott will be back on a job. Ah, <laughs> oh, cut it out, Costello. You're just jealous because Viola and I are more popular than you are. You're popular? Certainly. Haven't you noticed every week when I come to the broadcast, there's a mob outside that grabs me and asks me for my autograph? Sure, but Abbott, I'm asking you. Do you think it's worth it? What do you mean, is it worth it? Dressing up every Thursday like Dinah Shore. I... <laughs> you see, Viola? He is jealous of our popularity. Go ahead, Viola. Tell him how popular you are. Well, I don't like to brag, Costello, but I was over at RKO yesterday and walked on a set and Cary Grant kissed me three times. So what? I was over at MGM yesterday. I bent over to tie my shoe and last he licked my face. (laughs) (laughs) Costello, have you been showing Viola around Hollywood the way you promised? Sure, I took her to Republic Studios. All the cowboys were there. Didn't we have fun, Viola? Oh, yes, Costello. It sure was funny when you ran in that dark closet to play post office and that cowboy shoved his horse in with you. His horse? This is terrible. I'll see you later. Where are you going? Oh, where am I going? I got to go over to that corral and get back my fraternity pin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Abbott and I heard a young singer in New York several weeks ago, and we liked him very much, and we brought him back to Hollywood to join our show, and here he is, and we hope you like him too, Hal Winters. I'd love to get you on a slow boat to China, all to myself. Get you and keep you in my arms evermore. Leave all your lovers a weeping on the faraway shore. Out on the briny with a moon big and shiny, melting your heart of stone. Self alone. There is no verse to this song, cause I don't want to wait a moment too long to say that I love to get you on a slow boat to China, all to myself. Get out of here. 
stay out of here. What's the matter, Rabbit? Who hit you? The sound man. I, I like to I like to fool around with the sound effects. Every time I go over there and, and touch the stuff, he hits me. Is that so? Yeah. Huh. He can't do that to my partner. Come on. We're going over there and we'll tell him. Now, there's the sound effects department, Abbott. Go ahead. Come on. Fool around with anything you like. Thanks, Pat. Blow the whistles. Do anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, this is fun. Make a train. Yeah. So, you're fooling around with my stuff again, eh? Uh, ow! Ow! Ain't you gonna say something? I certainly am. What? Abbott, if you don't stop fooling with this guy's stuff, he's gonna knock your brains out. <laughs> this is all my fault for listening to you. From now on, I'll take care of myself. I can stand up for my rights. So why don't you stand up for your rights with that guy? How could I? His lefts kept knocking me down. Let's go back there, Abbott. Somebody's writing this wrong. Let's go back there, Abbott. <laughs> I'll take care of you. I'm plenty tough. Here, feel my muscle. Go ahead and feel it. Muscle. I can't feel anything but a, a red corpsole. Yeah, but ain't it got a hard head? <laughs> Who are you kidding? I'm the guy has got muscle. I used to be a prize fighter. I was one of the cleanest fighters in the ring. You should have. You should have been. They threw enough water on you. <laughs> I'm the guy that can fight. I remember the last guy I fought. I hit him so hard that he hollered uncle. Well, who who are you fighting with? My little three-year-old nephew, Tony. <laughs> I thought so. You you can't fight and you can't act. In fact, none of your family has any talent. Just a minute. Yeah, how, yeah. how about my cousin, Vincent? He had a great voice, but he could only sing while taking a bath. They used to wheel him out on a stage in a bathtub. He'd seen him sing while taking a bath, but they fired him after his first performance. Why? When the people started applauding, he forgot himself and stood up and took a bow. <laughs> What is he doing now? Writing songs. You should hear his new song. He took a little of it from Irvin Berlin, a little from Cole Porter, a little from Sigmund Rundberg. What did he get? Three lawsuits. <laughs> uh, forget about your cousin. Wait a minute. What's all that mail doing in your pockets? Abbott, that's my fan mail. Mine? Everybody in the country is talking about my great character, Sam Shovel. Here, I'll read one. Dear Lou Costello, I'm simply crazy about your Sam Shovel detective programs. Last week, as I sat listening to your show, you were so thrilling, I froze to my seat. I'm coming over tonight to see you. There's a guy out here to see you, Costello. What does he look like? He's a short man with a frozen seat. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Costello. Let's get on with the show. What is your uh, Sam Shovel case for tonight? It's one of my smaller <clears throat> cases, Abbott. I call it the case of the sailor who was shot while having Hedy Lamar and Lana Turner's pictures on his chest, or he died with his buttes on. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Let's do it. Okay. And now the makers of Crummies, the breakfast food that dares to be different, presents the adventures of Sam Shovel, private detective. But first, a word about our product, Crummies. Crummies is the only breakfast food that comes ready to serve. We put in the sugar, strawberries, milk, and cream right into the package. Look for it on your grocer's shelf in the large, soggy box. <laughs> And Crummies is fine for the youngsters. You can safely feed Crummies to a two-year-old. Some of the well-known two-year-olds that eat Crummies are Citation, On Trust, and Bazooka. <laughs> Crummies is the only breakfast food that is shot from cannon. So remember, when opening the package, stand back. <laughs> No cereal is as good as Crummies. You can put that in your pipe and smoke it. In fact, it tastes better if you put it in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> and now for the further adventures of Sam Shovel, private detective. Yes, I'm Sam Shovel. Sam Shovel, private detective. I don't feel so good today. Last night, my fraternity invited me to a football dinner. That's the last time I'll eat football for dinner. <laughs> I'm kind of tired, too. I traveled all night. I rode the chief in from Albuquerque. Next time, I'm going to take a train. Riding piggyback on an Indian is murder. I was down there trying to get a conviction on one of my cases, Maxie the murderer. But he had a clever lawyer. I charged him with murder, but the jury whitewashed him. I charged him with larceny, but the jury whitewashed him. Then I took him to a Turkish bath. I had to get all that whitewash off him. 
<laughs> My correspondence is piled, piled up away. Wow, ooh, a lot while I was away. I see a carbon copy of the letter I sent to Sears and Roebuck for a pair of handcuffs. It reads, send handcuffs. If good, we'll send check. <laughs> then I pick up their answer. It reads, send check. If good, we'll send handcuffs. <laughs> That reminds me I may get called on another case. I think I'll clean my Remington before I put it back in my pocket. Someday I'm going to buy a gun. <laughs> I get tired carrying a typewriter in my pocket. Suddenly I look up. There on the wall of my office is an oil painting. Bought it last year. It's pretty. But it's a lot of trouble. Every day I got to oil it. <laughs> I glance across the court. The beautiful stenographer in the insurance office is just coming to work. She's punching the time clock. Clock punched her back. <laughs> I pick up my morning paper on the front page. There's a picture of John L. Lewis. John L. Lewis on the front page. I study his face. I'm trying to figure which eyebrow has the Tony. <laughs> Looks like another slow day for the detective business. As I sit here in my little office, I'm unhappy. I'm down in the dumps. Whenever I'm in this office, I feel down in the dumps. That's not strange. My office is located at the dumps. <laughs> Across from my office is a stationery store. There's no sign on it, but I'm sure it's a stationery store. I've been watching it for two years. It hasn't moved an inch. <laughs> I just remember last week, my pal, Lieutenant Abbott, invited me to dinner, and I must send his wife a bread and butter note. That's a sloppy job. There's nothing I hate worse than writing on bread and butter. <laughs> I glance out at the window in the parking lot. They're getting ready to move my car again to let another one out. I hope the owner moves it, not the reckless attendant. Thank goodness the owner moved it. <laughs> I noticed my pal, Lieutenant Abbott, in the homicide squad coming this way. He's a regular bloodhound. When he's after a crook, he can smell a trail. In fact, he smells any place. <laughs> One thing about Lieutenant Abbott, he speaks straight from the shoulder. He's got to. That's where his mouth is. <laughs> Just then, Lieutenant Abbott walks into the office. Hello, Sam Shovel. Sam, I just had the most sensational lunch. What a meal. I ordered pork chops, bacon, fried ham, pig's knuckles. When Lieutenant Abbott eats, he goes hog wild. <laughs> well, a cop has got to keep his strength up, Sam. I never know when I'll get in a fight. Lieutenant Abbott is right. One thing I'll say for him, he never ran away from a fight. He always takes a taxi. <laughs> Sam, I'm, I'm happy today. I'm feeling pretty chipper. I'm really chipper. Lieutenant Abbott is not lying. Nobody is chipper than he is. He's the chippest <laughs> man I ever met. He lives at the Fiddle Hotel. It's a violin. <laughs> the rooms are a dollar a night and up. If you get a room for a dollar, you're up all night. Ma'am, I thought I heard something moving. The sound came from that bureau. We crossed the office to of the bureau and started opening the drawers. There's nobody here. You won't find me here. It's my bureau of missing persons. <laughs> Speaking of missing persons, Sam, what happened to that crooked musician you were trailing? Lieutenant Abbott was referring to Matty Banjo Head Malnick the leader of one of the crookedest bands in this country. Sam, how can you say that? Maddie's boys are all artists. They must be artists. I know they're not musicians. <laughs> Lieutenant, when Maddie banjo head mound like heard I was after him, he took it on the lamb. That was three weeks ago. <laughs> Hiya, Sam Shovel. He's still on that lamb. <laughs> Sam, you gotta help me. That Bergman gang is trying to shake me down for $10,000, and I'm afraid I'll have to pay through the nose. Why should you have to pay through the nose? That's where I keep my money. <laughs> what a clever crook that Malnick is. When he needs money, he don't have to blow a safe. He just blows his nose. <laughs> just look at it. I'd like to have his nose full of Canadian nickels. <laughs> Malnick, you'll have to get out of here. Sam and I are talking business. I'll go, but first I want to give Sam this batch of cookies I baked for him. Here, Sam, they're your favorite kind, policeman cookies. Policeman cookies? Sure, ain't you never heard of cop cakes? So long, Copper. Everybody's got good writers but me. I'm going to have to start paying next week. 
That Malnick is a very clever boy. He ought to go over to the Eagle Laundry and put his head in with the flat work. Well, never mind him, Sam. Hey, look who's coming across the street. It's Two-Gun Gertie. Two-Gun Gertie, the gorgeous gun mall. Once I asked her to marry me, but she refused. She's too class conscious. Gertie is class conscious? I ain't got no class, and she's conscious of it. <laughs> Just as I finished making this clever remark, the door burst open, and Gertie entered my office. Sam! Sam, shovel my darling. Oh, Sam, you gotta help me. What's up, Gert? The cops are after me. They think I'm hiding something. They think I've got it on me. You may have it on you, but you sure ain't hiding anything. <laughs> Careful, Sam. She's up to something. Oh, Sam, you gotta help me. If you do, I'll be your slave. I'll cook for you. I'll bake for you. I'll I'll, I'll sew for you. I'll keep going, Gert. You're bound to hit something I like. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're a card, Sam. Come here. I'm gonna let you kiss me. Sam, show. Mm. Where are your manners? <laughs> Where are your manners? How dare you kiss this gun mall right before me? Wait your turn, Lieutenant. I'll kiss you next. <laughs> Sam, Sam, why don't we start going steady again? We could be so happy. Look out the window, Sam. See those two lovebirds in that tree? Yes. Why can't we be like them and do what they're doing? Okay, but I don't think the branches will hold us. <laughs> Sam, this is ridiculous. You're a cop and she's a crook. She's not for you. Ah, keep out of this, Flatfoot. I'll prove to Sam that I'm the girl for him. I'll give him a kiss that'll bust the buttons off his vest. That, that I'd like to see. Come here, Sam. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Sam Shovel. Say something. Has any lady in the audience got a needle and a thread? Costello, we're a little late, so you better say thanks to this lovely audience in the studio and to all the swell people who are listening in at home. Thanks for listening, folks. And I would like to thank the people that help us bring you this show every Thursday night. Our writing staff is headed by Eddie Foreman with Paul Conlon, Pat Costello, Martin Ragaway, and Leonard Stern. And thanks to Maddie Malnick and all his boys and our vocalist, Hal Winters. And thanks also to our producer, Charles Vander. We'll be back again at the same time next Thursday. Good night, folks. Good night to everybody in Paris. Good night. <laughs> Listen each Thursday night at this time for another great Abbott and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood. Be sure to stay tuned for the outstanding entertainment which follows throughout the evening on this ABC station. <laughs>